My name is Jeffrey Cam, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Cam on Twitter or at JeffreyCam.com. This podcast is entitled, Why Artificial Intelligence Won't Fly in Oil and Gas and How to Give It Wings. Algorithms, a kind of artificial intelligence, are going to struggle to get off the ground in oil and gas. Here's why and what management can do to give AI wings. I remember watching my dad at work when I was growing up. He was a math whiz, and he correctly tallied up long columns of numbers in his head. One day, the boss issued these new battery-powered calculators to the troops. They were so cool, with their space-age red symbol readouts, tiny keys, and form factor. The funny thing was, Dad added up the numbers using the calculator, as the boss wanted. But then he redid all the math by hand, because he didn't quite trust the calculator, the algorithm of his day, to get it right. Algorithms are now pervasive in our broader society. Consider my smartwatch, for example. It's jammed with apps and algorithms. One of its more clever is the heartbeat monitor. Using a sensor to read the movement of blood just under the skin, and with a bit of math, the monitor picks up my heartbeat rather well. I compare its accuracy with the built-in monitors on gym equipment and a chest strap monitor that I use on my bike, and it's spot on. I find it super valuable. When I'm out cycling, I use the heart monitor to guide my activity levels. I might feel winded, but the monitor tells me my heart rate is well below my norms, so I push on. I have no clear idea how it works, but I accept it. Medical professionals think this is junk. They use highly sophisticated heart rate measurement devices way beyond the simple stethoscope. They bolt sensitive electrical sensors on the skin in a dozen places and can pick up the tiniest signals. They relate detailed heart measurement data with lung performance and blood pressure, which I can't do with my watch. They rightfully challenge my watch's ability to pick up nuances and beat regularity and they diss how it records the occasional false positive where the reading is worryingly high or dangerously low. At best, they say your watch merely confirms that you have a heart, a piece of data that I didn't really need to spend $500 to discover. My anonymous health professional is my proxy for an oil and gas engineer who has discovered that someone has strapped some newfangled digital sensor to some equipment and then is then asked to rely on the interpretation of the data from the sensor using an algorithm. Let's peel this apart to see why it's a fraught endeavor. The oil and gas industry is much less uncertain now. My engineer friend in oil and gas relies on the technology model designed 40 years ago, roughly the development of the SCADA systems in the 70s and 80s. Analog sensors are built to known industrial standard, embed directly in the piece of equipment, and hardwired to a control panel somewhere or to a front-mounted gauge. There are no uncertainties in the industrial standard or in the tests of compliance that the device and gauges must pass. Copper wire is highly reliable, and the SCADA system has been working itself reliably for decades. The data is extracted from the historian directly into an Excel spreadsheet on a trusted employee's computer for analysis and interpretation, and the people involved are all known quantities. The engineers know how all this stuff works. It's been part of the curriculum and disciplines for decades. The older guys hire the younger guys and pass on all of this knowledge rather well. New technologies, though, introduce fresh uncertainties into this stable world. Imagine strapping a new modern wireless sensor on a piece of equipment, using some artificial intelligence engine in the cloud to interpret that data, and making decisions based on the results. Here's eight uncertainties. Number one, the sensor itself, its technical features, and its compliance with industrial standards. Number two, the sensor mounting, and how reliable is it to capture the data correctly? Number three, the power supply to the sensor and its reliability. By the way, AA batteries don't make the grade. Number four, the data the sensor generates and the potential for compromise. An embedded sensor cannot be as easily compromised as a strap-on wireless model. Number five, the integrity of the wireless network that moves the data from the sensor to the cloud analytics engine. Number six, the technical competence of the algorithm's author. Number seven, the integrity of the algorithm itself. And number eight, the results that the algorithm generates. AI enthusiasts are frustrated by the slow pace of adoption of AI technology in oil and gas, but I find they offer little by way of helpful response to many of the uncertainties that I've just mentioned. 
and some social norms compel them to block their own progress. For example, they cannot or won't clearly explain how their AI algorithm technically works, perhaps out of a concern that their IP will be compromised, which means that the engineer just has to trust it. Well, let's assume that some brave oil and gas company kicks off an AI engine, rolls out a shiny new algorithm to the field, and hopes for results. Assume that they resolve the problems of sensor provenance, network reliability, power supply, connectivity, and all that other stuff. But remember, the field team does not understand how the algorithm actually works. And soon, the algorithm starts generating some analysis. Here's four possible scenarios. Number one, the algorithm correctly interprets the data, and the interpretation matches what the engineer thinks should be the result. The AI machine is improved, but he's irritated that the company spent a lot of money on something he could already do. Therefore, the full benefits of the smarter machine are going to be deferred. Scenario number two. The algorithm correctly interprets the data, but the interpretation differs from what the engineer thinks should be the result. Now the engineer is in a dilemma. Is this a false positive? Does he take the recommended action for an uncertain outcome? Or does he ignore the recommended action and rely on his intuition or on a sidebar manual exercise to duplicate the algorithm's results? Performance metrics and targets compel the engineer to weigh the business and personal consequences to determine the safe path. And what if the machine is correct and proves the engineer has been wrong all this time? Will there be repercussions? Who wants that embarrassment? So our engineer reverts to previous analysis and ignores the machine. He loses a learning opportunity for both the human and the machine, and he'll spend time and money trying to replicate the algorithm. At least he can claim to have avoided a potential catastrophe, which he would have avoided anyway, and he won't be embarrassed by a machine. But if he follows the machine's recommendations, he is actually better off in both the short term, because of a smarter decision being made and fewer wasted resources, and in the long run, because the machine is made smarter. Scenario number three, the algorithm incorrectly interprets the data, and the engineer agrees that the interpretation is incorrect, forcing the engineer to rely on previous know-how and analysis. Again, he's irritated that the company spent a lot of money on something that doesn't work, and he's no better off. His choices then inform the algorithm, which gets a bit smarter and might pay off later on, but at the risk of doing himself out of a job. Number four. The algorithm incorrectly interprets the data, but the engineer can't tell that the interpretation is incorrect and has no better analysis to leverage. Again, the engineer is in a dilemma. What if the machine is wrong? If she follows its recommendations and it doesn't work, is she to blame? She's in a bind and has no option but to execute, and there's a failure. She'll wear this at the next performance review, but at least she can cast some shade at the algorithm, and the algorithm is a little smarter. If you think for a minute you're going to throw AI into the field and it will get results, think again. The business model in place in oil and gas, as I've demonstrated in these four scenarios, is stacked against you. Here's what else you need to change. Number one is sponsorship and support. You need to demonstrate unyielding support for AI. If the troops on the front line don't think they have management support, they're not going to invest much time in new technology. All four scenarios that I outline above are correctly seen by the engineering team as either a waste of time and money or create very poor outcomes for the troops. Number two, education. Insist that the AI provider provide as much education as possible on how the algorithm actually works, its self-learning ability, and its limitations. And the AI provider needs to get over themselves and their obsession with protecting their IP. Number three are the performance metrics. You have to tune the performance metrics to reward the behavior required. Support of supervisors, agility, and willingness to trial new concepts, and a smarter AI machine. The success of AI in the field is not going to be based on how good the algorithms are, but on how good management is at promoting change in the workplace. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please tell a friend about the show. If you have a minute, please leave a review and a rating on iTunes, as that helps others find the show along with other great content. You can follow Jeffrey on Twitter, at Jeffrey Can, or on LinkedIn. Also, look for Jeffrey's new book, entitled Bits, Bites, and Barrels, The Digital Transformation of Oil and Gas, 
on Amazon and other fine online bookshops. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil & Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.